Alhamdulillah <laughs> Wa ashadu anna muhammadin abdu rusul wa mustafar Ala wa masali wa salim ala abdi karu rasulika muhammadin wa ahlihi wa sahbihi wa salim Praise be to the one Allah who revealed the book to his servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and did not make any distortion to it I praise him Allah, the exalted one, the high and I thank him, it is he who deserves the praise and gratitude I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant of Allah, his messenger who was chosen by Allah. O Allah, let your blessings and your peace be upon your servant and your messenger Muhammad and on his family and companions. Alhamdulillah, <coughs> 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 Our ardent prayer is that Every time we awaken, we become more enlightened. Because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. And we pray that we get it. Babies in the womb, babies outside of the womb, uh, preteeners, uh, up to a certain age, we're still innocent. If we leave, we don't have enough sins to count for that much. But the older we get, the older we get. See, getting old is not always you live and you get wisdom by living. So there's some dumb, stupid old people. And if you're living and you keep living and you're not getting wiser, just if you and the wisdom is coming from living. That's not the key. Wisdom comes from Allah Almighty. Allah may give wisdom any time. He gives it to any, kind, any, any time. What we have to realize is that when we are born, we are hosted in this life. We, first of all, <clears throat> our physical body is not the first existence of ourselves. See, we're in existence, it's just that we were hidden. Allah says, I'm a hidden treasure. I wanted myself to be known, so I created creation. So, by us being hidden, Allah Almighty is bringing us out of being hidden to witness to Allah Almighty in ourselves. So, we were in existence. We were paradise, we were paradise people, we were in paradise. Promising Allah, oh Allah, I'm always going to be obedient servant to you. And the love fest was just unbelievable. Everybody was just love. Souls loving themselves, loving each other, loving their Lord. That's why when you see a baby is born, all babies have love. They don't. The nurse may pick them up. The doctor, the, anyone may pick. They just smile and they're happy. You're feeling the love be, just beaming off of them. Everybody comes here with love. Allah Almighty says, first of all, I create you from dust. Then I make you a sperm. I put you in your mother's womb. For so many months, clothe you with flesh and bones. And during that period, uh, that's, this our, that's our car, that's our vehicle. Now Allah Almighty sends the engineer from paradise who are, that, uh, that, that's, that's us. 
in about the first uh, 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 40 days, Allah Almighty sends that soul in, bam! Or when the baby starts to move. Say, oh, I felt something kick me. Feel it right here. It's kind of like scary when you, dang, something in there. That's frightening. That's miraculous. Allah Almighty has taken some, some dust, some dirt, made it into sperm, put it in a womb of a mother to be fertilized. Then at a certain point, it's ready. Lots of, whoop, okay. All right, uh, you go down to earth. Bam! You're in the womb of your mother. This is why when every baby come out that womb, they say, Allah! They don't know you. <laughs> they don't say, hey, dad, mom, wow. No. Allah! That's all we know. Please turn your phones off. Anything, that's a distraction. It brings everything down. Uh, when that happens, when Allah Almighty sends that so, see, shaitan is angry of such gatherings. Because we get to know who we are and whose we are. We're reminded of our origin. And this is the problem. We don't know our origin, so while we're here, we don't have a clue about ourselves. So everybody's acting like animals because they don't know that they are souls with bodies. They just think we are animals. We had a birthday, and now until we leave, that's the time, the only time that we have. So when we leave here, we're done. Because we was just born here, and we just died here, and that's it, that's all. So when we start talking like this, Shaitan is always going to send some distraction. Always, you can guarantee it. Somebody's going to get up and walk out, or something, or a phone rings, or anything. What it does, it brings it down. Because our avowed enemy is Shaitan. That's our only avowed enemy. Well, there's four enemies, but Shaitan is controlling them. Our desires, our ego, this world, and Shaitan. And Allah warned us against Shaitan because Shaitan, Azaziel, never accepted to bow down to Adam because he saw Allah Almighty showed the magnificence of what he was doing. They was like, what is Allah doing? And they saw Allah Almighty work his ability. Then he blew in his spirit in the Adam, the same spirit that comes in our way. We, same thing happens with us. Allah blows his spirit in us. Same thing. Just that we're in the womb. He was in paradise. So Adam has been, so, so Satan, Azazel has been Unhappy about that ever since. So he is the avowed enemy of Adam and Eve and the descendants of Adam and Eve. So when you don't know your origin about how that happened and that it's still continuing, and that's why there's so much divide and conquer, who, who is that divided and conquered? And whose interest is that in for us to be divided and conquered? Not our interest. Not our interest. Whose interest is it in? See, Shaitan, he didn't get the caliphship. Allah Almighty wanted Adam to be his representative. Azazel, who later became Satan because he rejected Allah Almighty's order, he still wants the caliphship. He still wants it. And we're not aware that he is still working on us to destroy us so he can conquer us. At one time he could be seen, but because he became so ugly, now he's a spirit, he, he's an entity, a spirit that can actually cohabitate with that part of us that's of the earth, our egos. When he realized that I can approach them, he says, I'm going to approach them from the front, from the back, from the sides. And I'm going to lead all of them astray. Allah said, you will not be able to lead all of them astray except for those who are not 
listening to me don't have Allah's grace on them. And even Shaitan said, I won't be able to misguide them. That means they don't try. Don't mean they don't come around them. So you have to understand that he has been trying to establish his kingdom ever since they fell. Adam and Eve repented. Allah forgave them. They went back to the heavens. Shaitan has stayed here. And his only objective is to rule the descendants of Adam and Eve. And he's doing a doggone good job. Because he's tricking us. And the thing about it, we don't listen to him directly. It's not that we will listen to him directly. He is deceptive in working through our desires. Making us want stuff. Getting us addicted to stuff. Notice that all addictions before you, before you get really addicted and have to pay your life and your money for it, it's always free. It's, it's available. Then all of a sudden there's a price for it. See, we're not thinking. There's a reason for everything that happens. Allah says there's not a leaf that falls that he don't know about it. It's not a thing that happens that Allah Almighty has not permitted. The leaf cannot fall unless Allah Almighty permit. Allah says that I, my throne is over the heavens and the earth and everything between, and I have power over all things. So who is this Satan do that's causing havoc? And then people say, well, why would somebody create something that's going to be against Why would Allah create something that's going to be against it? Because Allah Almighty is using Satan to test the believers. See, Allah says, be in a race for all that is good and forbidding what is wrong. Those who compete for goodness, Allah, they show out and show out their Lord's goodness, his, his love. And that love is everything. It is everything. That love is the wisdom. That love is the power. That love is the favors, that love is the mercy, that love is the beauty. There's nothing more beautiful than Allah. There's no one more gracious than Allah. There's no one more merciful than Allah Almighty. There's no one more powerful than Allah Almighty. He wants us to know that, but He shows us through ourselves. That's why Esau ibn Maryam said, Fight everything that is not of you to reach to the kingdom of heaven within yourself and all things be given up. He says, seek that love. When you seek that love, that divine love, that real love, that is really the essence of you, then that love is transforming. That love transform you. When we leave, when we lose that, we fall into a lust. Allah Almighty destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because they lost their love. They started to lust. There was no love for one another. Genuine love in an innocent way. It became lustful and defiled. And it had to be destroyed. When the people of Noah started to lose their love and they started to lust off power and all kinds of abominations, they lost their love and Allah Almighty had to destroy them. Allah protected the few that kept their love. See, Allah Almighty is love. There's nothing greater than love. Nothing is greater than love. Love conquers all. Love makes the world go round. Love is everything. Love is what was used when Moses went to that, 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 the Red Sea. And everything loves Allah Almighty. Everything in creation is in remembrance of Allah Almighty. All the elements and all the atoms and all the molecules. And they love their creator. They all have their mode of worship, whether you understand it or not. And they all love Allah. 
when Moses came to that ocean with his love of his Lord, that they loved, they obeyed him. Love obeys love. Love seeks out itself. Love only loves love. We don't get it. So we lose, fall from the state of love, we fall into the state now of lust. What happened to Pharaoh? He didn't rule by love, he ruled by lust. He had a power that gave his ego a feeling that he was God on earth. He wasn't a just ruler. He ruled with a harsh hand. And so Allah Almighty had to send someone that loved him that he loved to show Pharaoh that love conquers all. <laughs> so you have to understand that love ain't no joke. It's merciful, but it's strict. It's a power. It, it will have, love will have its way. Why do you think all the poets, all the singers, they sing about love? But everybody don't have love. Everyone is seeking love, but everybody don't know what love is. If it's not divine love, it's not love. See, we enjoy ourselves, and Allah doesn't say don't enjoy yourself. He wants us to enjoy ourselves, but he wants us to enjoy with love. Because you're going to keep the rights of people. You're going to respect people. You're going to love people. You're going to be careful of people. You're going to be compassionate of people. You're going to care for people. You're going to want for your neighbor what you want for yourself. You're going to want for your brother and sister what you want for yourself. When you pray for something for yourself, you're going to first pray for it for your brother and sister. That brings it quicker. Because that's love. See, love moves faster than anything. The earth is on its axis and everything else is going around the earth. And that axis and that movement is the love that Allah has given it to do what it do. So, we be, so the world spends so much that we won't be falling out into space like this. We can walk around and jump up and down and come back down. Because it's spinning on its axis. So that is that love. That's love's love. This is, this is a condition I want for those who I'm sending there to know about me. I want everything to be right for them. Allah Almighty invited us here. And that's who deserves our love. Because that's who loves us. Shaitan don't love us. He don't love us. He's the artist. He wants us to be miserable. Because he's miserable. Why well, you know why he's miserable? Because Allah Almighty ain't giving him no love. <laughs> and so he's working so hard to prove to Allah, Allah, they don't deserve your love. Watch what I do to them. Watch what I am able to tempt them to do. See there, they did that. See there? He didn't do what Allah asked him to do. So you have to keep this in your mind and keep this in front of you all the time. Because then if you life will be sweet, it'll be easy, an easy life. It should be an easy, a sweet life. Difficulties should be rolling off you like water off a duck's back. You shouldn't have difficulties. Does love harm you? When you have love, you have everything. You want for nothing when you have love. When we were in paradise and that love was just flowing, we didn't have to work for it. We had nobody testing us and trying to take our love. It was, oh, Allah, I love you. I will always be obedient to you. The last sinners put us in his body, sent us here. Then Satan said, oh, Allah, Give me respite. I will lead them all astray except for the ones that keep your love. I ain't going to be in touch. I don't have no power over nobody. I just whisper. Now, if they lusted, I got some lust for them. 
If they liking something they not supposed to be like, I'm going to whisper, I'm going to come on them and hot days, and I'm going to have them vibrate, salivate. Oh, I got to have that. But what about Allah? Oh, forget about Allah. What about your wife? Oh, forget about, what about you? Forget about, forget about my children. Forget about me. I want that. Can't nobody help us. See, the only way to get rid of any addiction is not taking some pills to, to overlap, to get to stop you, or some therapy sessions in your mentality. You got to repent to Allah Almighty and say, Allah, please take this off. You got to get that repentance with sincerity and love. Oh, Allah, please help me. Ain't nobody doing that. See, when Dawud Salam, when he sinned against his soul, may Allah be pleased with him. That's our brother, and we love him. He loves us. But his story is a lesson to us. To study what he did so we won't fall into the same pitfalls that he fell into. He lusted after one of his soldiers wife. And he wanted that woman, and he sent the soldier on the front line to be killed so he could get the woman. Now, he had 99 women. <laughs> So the angel came to him and said, in the person of a, of a man, and says, oh, king, because he was a king. He was a warrior, he was a king, he was a poor, and uh, a prophet. And he came to him and says, oh, sir, oh, king, oh, righteous king, I want to plead to you. I have 99, I have one cow and some, my neighbor has 99 and he wants mine. And they say, oh, what's an unjust person? He's greedy. Then it came to him. That's your story, pal. <laughs> he went as a Jew on his face crying for 40 days. The skin just burned off his forehead from crying so much. Grass grew up around his head everywhere. Forty days, but he repented sincerely. He says, "Oh my Lord, please forgive me, please forgive me." And he felt so bad about it. He poured his heart out for forty days. All the, all the, all the, 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 the water in his cells and his organs, everything in his whole body, he poured it. He was dry. Lord Almighty, let him dry him out too. He dried him out too. Why? To learn a lesson. To learn a lesson. You can't go nowhere with lust. Don't lust after nothing. Lusting after something is putting your heart, your love, into something that has no life. Why would you invest a, your hard-earned money and something that's not even there. It was a lesson. See, everything is a lesson. That's why you got to be vigilant. You got to be security on your soul. You got to guard your love. Watch where you put your love. Watch who you give your love to. You have to be like a business person. You got to be like a buffet. What is that? Almost going on train there, train Because he knows how to invest his money. He invests his money on investments that gives him a return. Invest your love where you're going to get love back. This is why you invest your love in your Lord. You invest your Lord in your Lord, Lord gives it back to you, multiplies. You want to increase your love, give your love to your Lord. Give your Lord to the prophet. Give your Lord to those in authority over us. Give your Lord to the believers. Your, your, your love to the believers. It comes back multiplied. See, now you're in the state of paradise again. You have left there. You're in the physical body, but you have transformed your lust to love. Now, you gangster now. Anybody that carries the love rules. You can be a king sitting on a throne, a king or queen sitting on a throne. Be telling people what to do. But if you have love and you're giving them love, they're going to be so committed and so loyal that they're going to support your throne 
See, this is why Allah now, Allah Almighty is, is raising up sultans. Sultans are, they're the sultans of the heart. Allah has given them authority. They rule through the heart. Not through their ego, not through their mind, because it's limited. They rule through their heart. They have the power of attracting and, and, and parting the Red Sea, doing everything. Why do you think the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he went into Mecca with his head bowed, and all his enemies that tried to kill him and to kill a lot of their relatives, because they were with him, why did they say, oh, how do you fight someone and knock down the walls of your heart? Because he came with that gangster love. He loved them to death. They couldn't do anything. It brought about a respect around him. Because the angels loved him. Allah loved him. All the prophets loved him. Allah Almighty says those who love their Lord, they are in the company of those who love their Lord. Prophets and saints and believers and martyrs and sincere people and all of those people they are they are family and this is why we can't get back to Allah Almighty unless we are connected to the rope of Islam the rope of Islam is the love that comes to the hearts of those who inherit that love you can't read up on it You can't jump straight up and down on it. You got to get it through your heart. Your heart has to be pure enough and ready enough to accept that love. That's the power. See, it is fair. So everybody's invited to it. But we're distracted. No, I don't want to love that. I ain't going to invest my money in it. I'm going to invest my money in something that I'm going to lose my money. We invest our hearts, our hearts in the wine women song, wine women men song, all kind of honey, funny, sunny, all kind of nonsense. Allah wants us to enjoy ourselves, but He said, "Don't forget me. Let Allah give you what you are in need of, out of His love, and He's going to give you the love of your heart, the desires of your heart." Mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, socially, politically, ethically, morally. We don't get it. We don't get it. The most valuable thing for us is to be around one of those who have that love in their hearts. That's the only way we can get it. We got to be around the love. We got to be around the love. It's like if you go in a perfume shop, and even if you don't buy no perfume, when you come out, what you gonna smell like? People just spraying this stuff up there. You go into a bathroom and stay in there long enough, and a lot of people were relieving themselves, what you gonna smell like when you come out? <laughs> so put it together. We don't serve no stupid guy. And Allah didn't put in us stupidity. He put in us the, the ability to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. What is right and what is wrong is either lust or love. How you invest your heart. How to be a good business person in life. Investing in that that's going to give you more returns on your love. If you're going to give your love, give your love somewhere you're going to get love back. And we've missed that. That's why Allah Almighty now is raising up his lovers. They love, they love, they're lovers. You think you was a lover out there? Mm -hmm. Those ain't lovers. Those are lusters. We talking about lovers. See, Jesus Christ was one of those lovers. May Allah be pleased with him. Amen. And Allah loved him. And when all of his disciples, they left him for dead, said, now I don't know him. And he was captured. Do you think that somebody you love, you would put on a cross and have them tortured? 
When you had the ability, you loved them, and you had the ability for them not to be tortured, would you torture them? No way. Allah loved him. Allah put a likeness of him on the cross in the person of Judas, who had stabbed him in the back. Judas was, was one saying, why have thou forsaken me? You forsook yourself. That wasn't Jesus Christ. Allah Almighty said, I took him to myself. That's why he's coming back, y'all. Coming back. He's coming back. A message to the wise is efficient. He's coming back. Spiritually, he's already back. He's speaking through the tongues of those who connected to his heart. Beware, be ready. He never attributed that he was God or the Son of God. He said, Allah did everything by your lead. And if he was God, why would he say you would do far greater things than me? I saw you going to be a greater God than God. Let's go back and play the text back. Let's go back and play the tape back. Let's look at it again. He said, you would do far greater things than me. So I want to challenge those preachers out there. Especially my buddies on Priests of L.A. <laughs> Let me come on and let's do a preacher teaching shout out. And whoever wins get all the people. Holler at me. I like y'all. You're sincere. But that ain't the end of the story. There's more to the story. People need to hear. And the law almighty who created everything and everything between is going to raise up his servants and they're going to come out like a bat out of hell with love. With gangster love that's going to shut it down. It will be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Promise you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Laham. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ayameen, Wasalatu Wasalamu Ala Karu Musulim, Muhammad Nabi Umi, Wa Ahlihi, Wa Sahihi Ajma'in. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe. May the greeting and the peace of Allah be upon your best messenger Muhammad, the unlettered prophet, and upon his family and upon all of his companions. Amen. Allah Almighty says, be in a race for all that is good. It is time for the race to begin. Let's have a preaching, teaching, shout out. Let's work it out. Let's get that together and bring the truth and the heart to the people and let a lie as apostle and Jesus Christ be the judge. <laughs> We're calling you out. You guys are sincere. I like you guys. But the story is more to the story. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أمنا عليهم غير المعدود عليهم ولا تعالى عليهم آمين